Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Nashville, Tennessee to visit Jeff Lane and check out a few of the cars in the Lane Motor Museum. Now, this has got to be one of the weirdest collections of automotive oddities I've ever seen in my life. There's everything from micro cars to race cars here. But Jeff's also got a lot of one-offs and prototypes that never quite made it into production. <laughs> and when you look at them, you can kind of see why. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hey Jeff, how you doing man? Nice to meet you, I'm doing good. What an insane place you have here. <laughs> it was actually Jay Leno that first uh, uh, turned me on to you. He was enamored with your, your Tatra. I guess you picked him up at the airport once with it or something, right? Yes, we did. And uh, he said, you know, he, Dennis, you gotta go down. You gotta see this place, it's really cool. You got all sorts of stuff here. Yeah, I've always been interested in the, the different ways that people solve different solutions. And since I'm an engineer, I'm kind of interested in the engineering aspect of a lot of the cars. So that's how I got into the more unusual cars. And you seem to favor, you know, French cars, uh, Czechoslovakian cars. You know, I mean, why is that? Or what, what trips your trigger, basically? Or is it, again, is it driven by just the, the engineering aspects? Yeah, I think we're predominantly European. And I think part of that is I started out with MGs. And after that, I got interested in Citrons. And I started kind of my collection from there and moved outward. And since Citron's a huge French car manufacturer, it, it ended up being predominantly European. A lot of micro cars. Yeah, and I always liked micro cars because they were kind of weird and wacky. And they did all these goofy <laughs> things to try to solve the problem of moving people around for almost nothing. So uh, These cars must be quite a hit. And you know, you get a lot of car enthusiasts th that think they've seen everything. And of course, when you come here, there's nobody that's seen everything that we have. Well, and it, it, I'll say, because <laughs> I've seen a lot. You know, as you can imagine, I've probably seen a lot of stuff. But you've got stuff here I've never seen, I've never heard of. You even got... Uh, Propeller-driven cars. Yes. Now this is th th this is a pretty cool car. We might uh, might be able to play with this a little bit later, right? For sure. Well, let's save that to the end because I'm sure it will destroy my mustache. <laughs> so let's go look at what else you got hiding in the corners over here. Okay. Let's go. Here we have a uh, we have a Tatra, right? Yes. This is a 47 T87. Correct. Is this the one you picked uh, Jay Leno up? at the airport with? This is the car. Yeah. And led to him buying one, right? That's right, we got him hooked on one. <laughs> He's a Tatra freak now too. <laughs> well, he loves oddball cars. This is kind of an oddball car. It's a, you know, it's a Czechoslovakian car, right? Yes. Three headlights and pretty aerodynamic. In fact, it's called an aerodynamic car, right? Right, it was called an aerodynamic series styled car. In the early 30s, it went 100 miles an hour. That was the big thing about this car, which was a wow, big deal. Yeah in Czech and anywhere in the, in the world at that time. So it was a very revered high-end car. These were really, uh, Hitler's officers liked these cars, didn't they? Yes, they did because uh, they were very fast and they were very comfortable. And so during World War II, since Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia, he allowed Tatra to make this car throughout the war in limited numbers so his generals could have... For he and his buddies, basically. He and his buddies to ride around <laughs> in, yes. Cool interior, though. Looks really comfy. I see why the officers would like it. Um, but one of the one of the weird things about Tatras is that they're a, the, not only are they a rear engine car, but it's a rear engine air cooled, right? Right. Tatra was innovative in air cooling engines, and then when they did the aerodynamic streamline series, they went to rear engine. And is this all part of? The aerodynamics, is, it, is that functional or is that just decorative? Now the fin, the fin is functional because again, because it went 100 miles an hour and they had difficulty with straight line stability above 80, they used different size fins and they did a bunch of testing to see where they could get the best increase in straight line stability and they settled on this size fin here. We'll open her up. Okay. What an interesting looking engine. I mean, overhead cam? Overhead cam. V8 uh, aluminum? All aluminum, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you can see the cooling fins in, in and around every On the cylinder. cylinder heads, yes. But otherwise just a single barrel carburetor. Single barrel carburetor, three liter, 75 horsepower. It must look wild rolling down the road. I mean, it's an interesting looking car. I mean, when this thing rolls by, do people People always, you know, look at it. They grab cameras out of their cars. If you stop at the gas station, people come running over to look <laughs> at it. Uh, so, it, I mean, it's a weird enough thing that they either think, a lot of people think you made it, 
<laughs> it's some kind of homemade car or something, or they want to know what it is. But yeah, it certainly attracts a tremendous amount of attention. It's a beautiful car in its own right. Yeah, it was very, you know, it was very well engineered and very well done, very well manufactured. I could see why Jay would like this car. Mm -hmm. well, let's, let's see what else you got. Okay. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, now here's one of your one-offs, right? This is, this is the Houston Rocket. Yes. Tell me the story of the Houston Rocket. Well, Bill Houston was a Pierce Arrow dealer, and when Pierce Arrow went out of business, he turned to be an entrepreneur, and his concept with this car was, after World War II, he was convinced that um, all the aircraft factories in California weren't going to be building airplanes for the war, and so he was going to create a car that was made mostly out of aluminum, and he would be able to sell that concept to the aircraft company so they could continue to produce something and sell something. And this was the prototype for that? This was the prototype for that. So. And there's no, I mean, there's no windows, there's no interior door handles, there's no nothing. <laughs> again, again, prototype, you know, so he was trying to develop the concept. They, they didn't get into making windows. They didn't, they apparently, we have pictures of it where they built a wood buck to make a top. Mm -hmm but they never actually made the top, so. One gauge with, with smaller gauges in it, and that looks like it came out of a Lincoln. Right, that is a, a speedometer out of a Lincoln, as a steering column is out of uh, a car from the, from the 30s. I mean, this drives too, right? Everything. Yeah, yes, it drives. It's, I mean, it's gotta look wild as it goes by. People must, <laughs> I mean, this must stop traffic. Pe people freak by it, undoubtedly. <laughs> they've, never, they've obviously never seen one of these. Okay, and there is only one of these. Yes. Open her up. Okay. And, and a V8, a flathead V8. Flathead V8, yes. I just can't believe that. Uh, 60 horsepower. So they originally apparently started with a four-cylinder Continental, and uh, Mr. Houston wasn't happy with the power output. And so they switched to a V8, and then even on top of that, they hot rotted it a little bit with the aluminum heads and the dual carburetors to get a little more speed out of it. How does it handle? I mean, with the weight distribution and everything, how does it handle on the road? It kind of wanders down the road. Mm. And when you hit a bump, the back end seems to get unsettled. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's not the most comfortable drive. It's a challenge. It's a it? challenge, <laughs> yes. Well, it, it's an interesting, odd, odd car. but. If you think this is odd, the Martin Aerodynamic is even stranger. Let's look at that. Okay. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, this one, I like the Houston Rocket, I do. But this car, I love this car. <laughs> this is the Martin Aerodynamic, right? Right, 1928. 1928, I can't believe this was built in 28. It, it doesn't look anything like anything built in 28. It was not like anything built. Or like actually built any so, other time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Martin was an air, he built airplanes previous to that, and that was all his experience and all his knowledge. So another aluminum bodied car? Aluminum body Over with a wood frame? Wood frame, yes. Now it's, it's another rear engine car, but it's got a, a, a grill up front. Right, so it's water cooled, has, has a radiator okay. up front, yes. Well, why, why didn't this get off the ground? so to speak. He had this theory that all these little airports around the, the United States, that the mechanics had all this downtime where they weren't doing anything. So he was going to ship like all these kit pieces to all these little airports and they were going to assemble the car. And so there's going to be all these little mini factories putting these cars together. Boy, that's a complex infrastructure. That would have been a very complex deal. Only one door. There's a door on this side, but there's no door on that side. Right, and again, that's the airplane influence because every time you put a door in it, it reduces the strength of the structure. Uh -huh. So they just put one door in, in the side. And it's actually fair, it's, it's the, the one door that exists actually enters the back seat, doesn't it? Right, so you have to walk through the back seat to get into the front. So, you know. how does she open up? Mm, like that, yeah. and then you just climb up and in, and huh? Climb up and through, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, the interior is, it looks original, is it? And we, the interior is original, we believe. As far as we know, this is uh, exactly the way it was. So 1928. 1928. Great dash, I love that. I don't know what it's out of. Yeah, uh, we believe it's out of a Nash from like the 2028 20, or oh, right yeah. around that time period. So the engine's back here. Yes. And this just, this whole thing comes off? The whole back comes Can off Can you pop here. it off? Sure. Wow. So a little four cylinder? Con Continental flathead, yes. 
But does this you drive this? We one do too? drive it some, yes. Mm -hmm. And it handles about like the Houston Rocket, or I would say comparable. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> wanders. Um, this car, the brakes are the biggest issue. The brakes are very poor. It has band brakes on the rear wheels only, so the brakes are very poor. Um, and it, you know, the suspension is is marginal. Uh huh. But it sure looks cool. It looks great. It looks really, really cool. But the coolest thing you've got here, I think, is the car with the propeller on it. Yes. Let's go check that baby out. Okay. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, this this is it, the, the Helicron, right? Yes. Well, you have a video of this on your website, and I just thought, I thought this was the craziest thing I ever saw. Um, the, and this is the real deal. This is a, an actual vehicle built when? Built in 1932 in France. And did it ever go into production? Were there more of them, or was it another one-off? This is a one-off, although the, the gentleman that built it apparently intended to put it into production uh, in the 20s, the French were pretty, some of them were very convinced that the propulsion, the means of propulsion for the future was going to be propeller, not just for cars, but for airplanes and for buses and boats and everything. And part of their theory was there was no clutch, there was no transmission, there's going to be less wear and tear on the wheels, and it was going to be more efficient. Um, Obviously, there was the theory and the reality of the noise <laughs> and the, wind, and the and wind they could never get around. So, so, it's a, so it didn't pan out. So, it didn't pan out. So it's a wooden body on what sort of a chassis? It's a Austin 7 uh, car chassis, which has been turned around backwards. And then it steers in the back. And again, that's because all the airplane makers of that time, the, the airplanes were all tail draggers. They steered from the back. So uh, it's one thing for an airplane. How is that for a car? See, it doesn't work too well in a car because although rear steering gives you better control, it doesn't give you high speed stability. Uh -huh. And what they never thought of was the airplane takes off and it doesn't matter. They don't need high speed stability, but in a car, of course, this car was not that fast anyway, but had it been fast, they would have had to do something about the rear steer. So what is the top speed on something like this? I would estimate 50 miles an hour after several minutes. <laughs> it takes a while to get there. Huh? Takes a while to get there. So it's not yeah. much off the line either, I bet. It is not much off the line. No, we've taken it on a couple of tours and driven a couple of 50 mile tours with it. So, really? Yeah. 50 miles uh -huh. with it? Yep. How's it do on hills? Uh, it does not do well, and every time you see a hill, it's full throttle and hope you don't have to <laughs> slow down. Yeah, so uh, it's nice to know where you're going. It likes, it likes Florida very much. <laughs> nice, flat. <laughs> nice and flat, <laughs> yeah. So San Francisco would not be a happy place for it. <laughs> and it's in uh, the French Racing Blue. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's powering it? You it's, have a more modern engine in there now. Right, it's a Citroen GS uh, 1.3 liter four-cylinder. And what would it have had originally, do you think? Probably an ABC Scorpion, which was a typical light aircraft engine of that era. You do run it. It does. It does run. Can we take this one out? Oh, for oh, this sure. This would be so much fun. Yeah. Let's, let's take this one out and play with it. Yeah. It might be the end of your mustache. Yeah, it will. It will be. That's so why we're doing it at the end. It will be the end of my mustache. <laughs> let's do it. All right. has been an experience. What a day. The Lane Motor Museum is something you got to check out. Every car enthusiast will go nuts. Nashville, Tennessee, be there.